following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, the college crunch. We're going to see a calling of universities. Students are fleeing higher ed in droves. That as many as 20% will be gone within the, the decades. And it's not just the virus that's driving them away. That's a revolutionary doctrine. Can America's institutions be saved? Or will campus correctness win the day? There's excitement in tearing things down. On today's 700 Club. Welcome to the 700 Club, yet another clampdown on travel. President Biden is blocking people from entering the United States to prevent further spread of COVID-19 and to slow down new mutations of the virus. The number of reported cases has hit a new milestone, and the administration is scrambling to get enough vaccines to the people who need them. Dale Hurd has the story. During the presidential campaign, critics said Joe Biden accused Donald Trump of xenophobia for banning travelers from nations deemed to be COVID hotspots. Now he's doing the same thing. Today, Biden will reinstate COVID-19 travel restrictions on non-U.S. travelers from Brazil, Ireland, the United Kingdom, 26 European countries, and South Africa because of concerns about a new variant of the virus. He's reversing an order from President Donald Trump in his final days in office that called for the relaxation of the restrictions. Officials say the highly contagious UK variant of the virus has now been detected in 23 states. The virus is basically telling us that it's going to continue to change and we've got to be ready for it. But scientists stress more research is needed on whether the variant is deadlier. It could be that the variant hit the UK uh, when their hospitals were overwhelmed. And we know when hospitals get overwhelmed, mortality rates tend to rise. It's clearly still a deadly disease and clearly more contagious. With the U.S. now surpassing 25 million cases of coronavirus, according to John Hopkins University, the White House has promised to deliver 100 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine in 100 days. But so far, heavy demand for the vaccine is outstripping the supply and some vaccination distribution sites are seeing hour-long waits. That's not the way we treat those we consider vulnerable in need of this vaccine most. You can't just tell the states and the local governments, here's some vaccines, now you go do it. No, we have to coordinate, we have to provide the resources. Meanwhile, Biden is trying to win bipartisan backing for a $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief package, but is getting pushback from Republicans over the federal government racking up even bigger deficits. Spending and borrowing trillions of dollars from the Chinese, among others, is not necessarily the best thing we can do to get our economy to be strong long term. If passed, the stimulus package would include another round of direct payments of $1,400 to most Americans. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Well, I think there's going to be a battle on the new stim stimulus package, and, and in particular, should checks be going to people that are making significant amount of money? Uh, they're talking about this even going out, out to um, families who have $300,000 a year in income. So we're borrowing from our future in order to put out these kinds of stimulus checks in an effort to keep the economy afloat. But the, the main news here is what are we doing to solve the underlying problem, which is COVID-19? And how quickly can we get the population uh, with a vaccine and anyone who wants that vaccine can, can receive it uh, and get some kind of immunity. But in the bad news of the day, it looks like the South African variant, uh, that mutation, uh, doesn't respond to the antibodies um, produced by the vaccinations. So there'll have to be a new round of vaccinations just for the one, that one particular strain. So in the meantime, we're going to see international travel absolutely throttled. Uh, and in my view, it should be. Uh, if these new variants are spreading around the globe, we need to keep them from coming here until we can get our population inoculated against the first one and until the vaccine can happen for the second one. These are tur turbulent times. And whether it's the political turbulence of the last election, 
what happened on January 6th, uh, an incoming administration, um, uh, Democrat control of the House, the Senate, and the executive branch, the ongoing problems of COVID-19, uh, the world situation, uh, what's going to happen in the Middle East, what's going to happen in Asia, uh, China cracking down, India now cracking down against Christians. Now more than ever, we as Christians need to pray. Can we solve these problems on our, our, on our own? Uh, the answer is no. But with God, all things are possible. And how do we reach him? Well, we reach him in prayer. So right now, let's just pray. Well, let's humble ourselves and pray. If there's anything in your life that is not proper uh, in your own eyes or in God's eyes, please turn from it. Please leave all of that behind. And let's pray. Let's ask God. We need him and we need his help. Pray with us. Lord, we lift America to you. We lift the whole world to you. And we ask for mercy. We ask that you would remove this virus, that you would give us the solutions, you would give us the vaccinations, you would give us a cure. Lord, for anyone who has this horrible disease, we speak healing into their bodies now. Lord, protect us, heal us. We turn to you. We can't do this on our own, but with you, we can do all things. Now, we ask for peace in Washington, D.C. We ask for peace in every one of our state capitals. We ask for peace in city councils. We ask for peace in our neighborhoods. Let your peace reign over our country, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you want to join us in prayer, uh, there's a real easy way to do it. All you have to do is call us and say, yes, you can count on me to pray. Um, 1-800-700-7000, or you can text PRAY to 71777. Well, in other news, Democrats are moving forward today with their plans for a Senate trial for President Trump. John Jessup has that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? Thanks, Gordon. The House of Representatives delivers the single article of impeachment to the Senate this evening. The charge, incitement of insurrection, is tied to the January 6th Capitol Hill riot. Although Democrats say a Senate trial will be just, a growing number of Republicans are now opposing it. It will be fair, but it will move at a relatively fast pace. I think the trial is stupid. Uh, I think it's counterproductive. Rubio says he'll vote to end the trial the first chance he gets. Other Republican senators believe the trial will only further divide an already polarized country, but Democrats say they have to go ahead for accountability. The trial is set to begin the week of February 8th. Leaders in both parties agreed to delay the trial to give Trump's team and House prosecutors more time to prepare. Democrats need 17 Republicans to vote to convict, something that's widely considered unlikely. Well, m one major question in the entire proceeding, since the basic premise of impeachment involves removing someone from office, is whether the Senate can try Donald Trump even though he's no longer president. What authority does Congress have over him at this point? CBN's Jennifer Wishon takes a look at the debate. While President Trump is the only commander in chief to be impeached a second time, does the U.S. Senate have the authority to convict Donald Trump, the private citizen, and prevent him from ever holding public office again? That's the question constitutional scholars on both sides are weighing in on. It's not a high crime and misdemeanor. Harvard law professor Alan Dershowitz served on Trump's legal team during the first impeachment and believes this second attempt is even more bogus. He says the Constitution protects the speech Trump used before the riots. You know how many people have stood where he stood and advocated marching on the Capitol? Uh, union leaders, civil rights leaders, to, to turn it from good to bad, members of the Ku Klux Klan, members of the Nazi Party, communists, suffragettes. Uh, that's a standard uh, tactic. You get up and you say, go to the Capitol. And now that the House has voted to impeach, the question remains, does the Senate have the power to convict a president after he leaves office and becomes a private citizen? 
The Constitution states, Judgment in cases of impeachment shall not extend further than to removal from office and disqualification to hold and enjoy any office of honor, trust, or profit under the United States. Trump can no longer be removed from office. That part, however, is not the ultimate goal for House Democrats. In fact, one of the other purposes of impeachment uh, in this case is to make sure that, the, that President Trump is not able to run for federal office again, that he's not able to seek the presidency. Some scholars argue the Senate has authority to approve that. According to Harvard professor Lawrence Tribe, judgments of removal from office and disqualification from running in the future are divisible and backed up by precedent in the impeachment cases of two federal judges. But Professor Dershowitz maintains it's removal and disqualification, not one or the other. Without having someone to remove, he says, senators can't then disqualify now Mr. Trump from running for office in the future. And under the Constitution, you can't impeach or remove somebody who is not in office. The impeachment power of the Senate extends only to sitting office holders. If Democrats remain united, they'll need at least 17 Republicans to vote with them to convict the president. Given its unprecedented nature and disagreement over the constitutional powers allowed, there is a good chance this case will end up before the Supreme Court. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News. Thank you, Jennifer. President Biden is set to issue an executive order to reverse a Pentagon, Pentagon ban that largely prohibits transgendered individuals from joining the military. That would reverse a ban ordered by President Trump in a tweet during his first year in office. The move could be announced as early as today. Biden quickly got pushback for his executive order last week, mandating that any school getting federal funding must let boys who identify as girls play on girls' sports teams. If they don't, the Department of Education could deal with them. The hashtag, as a result, Biden erased women began trending on Twitter. Well, Sarah Sanders, President Trump's former White House press secretary and one of his closest aides, is planning to run for governor of Arkansas, set to announce her bid today. Sanders is running in a solidly red state where Republicans tend to embrace the former president. The daughter of a former Arkansas governor, Mike Huckabee, Sanders had been widely expected to run for the office and Trump publicly encouraged her to go for it. Sanders has been laying the groundwork for her candidacy, speaking to Republican groups around the states. Well, it'll be a tale of two quarterbacks in this year's Super Bowl, as the veteran Tom Brady will be playing in the big game for an incredible 10th time. Brady is 43 compared to 25-year-old quarterback Patrick Mahomes and the defending champion Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs dominated the Buffalo Bills in Sunday's AFC Championship game, winning by two touchdowns, the final score 38-24. Mahomes threw for 325 yards, leading the Chiefs back to their second straight Super Bowl. And Brady is bringing a new team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, to the final game. After the game, Brady talked about defying the odds to reach the Super Bowl again, while Mahomes spoke about the opportunity to play against Brady. Being able to go up against one of the one of the greatest, not the greatest quarterback of all time, in his 150th Super Bowl. I mean, it's going to be a great experience for me. I mean, to, to go out there and get to get, have a chance to repeat and get to do it against the best. I mean, it's uh, it's something special, and I'm excited for the opportunity. This is the ultimate team sport, and um, you know we've had a lot of people work really hard over a course of a period of time to get to this point. So, um, you know, it's a uh, it's a tough journey to get here. Super Bowl 55 will be played on the home field of Brady's Buccaneers in two weeks on February 7th in Tampa. Many players on both teams have spoken about their Christian faith, as has the co-owners of the Chiefs, Lamar Hunt Jr. A potentially exciting matchup. Gordon, you have a favorite team there? Uh, no, I'm just rooting for a good game. I also am rooting for all the uh, medical professionals, everyone on the front lines. Congratulations to the NFL to opening it up to them to say you can come in and watch the Super Bowl in person, just need a vaccination, and they've been vaccinated, so uh, congratulations to them. But it's, it's, a, it's a day of mourning for Terry Musin. Yes, it is. Uh, right. She's reliving that fourth down play. Reliving the entire second half. And how can, <laughs> how can you have three interceptions of Tom Brady and not win the game? I don't know. I don't know. Moving mm -hmm. right along. Well, was, it really, <laughs> was it really pass interference? What? I don't know. I'm not. <laughs> You're not going to weigh in? Mine is not to. Reason Critique why. Critique the officials. <laughs>
exactly. <laughs> Go for it on what fourth down. Go for oh, it. Okay, it's Monday. It's a new week, folks. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, up next, reading, writing, and revolutions? Higher ed has become a hotbed for radicalism. Now there are calls to defund our colleges. Will these schools learn their lesson? And then a struggling entrepreneur gets an instant lift to see the idea that led to a financial breakthrough and landed her a spot on TV's Shark Tank. We've all heard the talk about defunding the police. Now there's a growing push to defund universities. Why and what will this do to university budgets that are already bleeding due to COVID-19? Heather Sells reports. American universities have come to a crossroads, decades in the making and accelerated by COVID-19. Students struggling with family finances and turned off by online learning are opting out and colleges are hemorrhaging. The prospect for the next few years is that we're going to see a calling of universities, a reduction in the number of them. Uh, it's estimated that as many as 20 percent will be gone within the, the decade. Dr. Peter Wood heads the National Association of Scholars. His group works to reform higher ed. And Wood sees dramatic reorganization coming. This fall, undergraduate enrollment fell by close to 4 percent including a 10 percent drop at public two-year colleges. The heart of the matter could be a number of Americans losing faith in these institutions that have gutted traditional content, like classes on Western civilization. Many universities most had this mentality that we are here to advance the health and flourishing of American democracy, the United States of America. The chief academic officer of Regent University, Dr. Gerson Moreno-Riano, is one of a growing number of scholars who worry that public institutions in particular have lost their way. What has replaced those courses at these elite institutions are what, are what I would call are courses that focus on myopic visions of oppression, right? So you have courses on queering God, courses on how to start a revolution, how to overthrow the state. Wood says the content has gradually shifted from critiquing American institutions to a wholesale rejection of them. That's a revolutionary doctrine. It's one that you can understand why some people are drawn to. There's excitement in tearing things down. Alongside promoting these revolutionary ideas comes stiff resistance and often outright rejection to opposing viewpoints. Students say they feel it. In a survey of 20,000, only one in four felt very comfortable talking with classmates about controversial politics like abortion, race, Israel, and gun control. And faculty are well aware that politically incorrect moves can cost them. Just last fall, the University of Southern California suspended a business professor who, while teaching online, explained a Chinese business word that mimics a racial slur in the U.S. Scott Shepard of the National Center for Public Policy Research says these types of incidents chill free speech and worse. We got universities that will not hire conservatives, that uh, conservatives who are on staff and, and uh, have tenure are denied the right to uh, academic freedom that the left has. He and a growing number of conservatives have been working for years to reform higher ed. One plan, state laws that promote intellectual diversity. South Dakota requires campuses to publish reports explaining any actions to encourage it. A more radical plan, taking their money away. What would it look like to defund universities? Advocates say it could start immediately with putting a stop to alumni giving and tuition payments. Federal and state funding could also be reassessed. The majority of public institutions, if not all, receive probably a third of their support from public monies, tax monies, from the very citizens who are part of the very society that some of these institutions or faculty institutions want to eliminate. So I, I argue that if that is the case, 
then we, sh those, we should pull funding, public funding from those institutions. And that comes with higher ed already on shaky financial ground. With that kind of financial pressure on their bottom lines, I think colleges and universities may well get around thinking about whether their business model actually works. That could pave the way for universities to rethink curriculum while creating the best environments for students to truly learn from a variety of viewpoints. Heather Sells, CBN News. Well, the original liberal arts education was designed to produce future leaders. And in the concept of liberal arts, you have every viewpoint and you allow that under freedom of speech, freedom of thought, freedom of conscience, that uh, you, you have a free debate of all ideas with the goal that the best ideas always win at the end. Well, that's no longer the case in our universities. Uh, political correctness is uh, absolutely run amok. You can't critique anything anymore. And if you believe in God and you believe in creation, well, then there is no faculty tenure anymore for you. You will not be hired. And uh, as soon as they find out if you are on, on staff, you'll, as soon as they find out, you won't be advanced anymore and you'll be shown the door. So that's the current state of higher education in America. Uh, for a long time, uh, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, uh, William & Mary, the, the founding colleges of the colonies, um, all believed that they were training the future ministers and the future leaders uh, of an emerging republic. And that is no longer the case. So what do we as taxpayers do? And then what do we as donors, alumni donors do? Uh, well, we no look for new solutions. And if the current business models won't work, and if the current intellectual exchange won't work, uh, well, then we need something new. Terry? Well, up next, thriving in the middle of a pandemic. How did this cash-strapped couple make 2020 their best year yet? Hear their secret when we come back. Penelope always felt like she had a hole in her pocket. Money seemed to disappear as soon as she earned it. So how did she go from worrying about buying gas for her car to paying cash for her own house? Well, she'll tell you herself. Take a look. Meet Penelope La Rosa, the entrepreneur behind Skinny's Instant Lifts. While Penelope runs a successful business today, there was a time when she struggled just to make ends meet. My goal was to have money for gas at that point. That was my big agenda. I worked, I had a good paying job, but I never had any money. I mean, it just kind of, it was like I had a, a pocket with a hole in it. And I was just continually in debt. She was $3,000 in the red when she decided to ask God for help. Who better to get counsel from than God? who has the solution to every problem that exists. I started listening to a tape series uh, called Believing You Receive, and it really taught the fundamentals about giving and receiving. Penelope started tithing and praying over her bills, believing that God would provide a way out of her debt. I had a legal right at that point to stand before God and say, I've done everything you asked me to do, now please do everything you told me you would. Shortly after, she had a conversation with a woman she'd recently met. And she was like, you know what? The Lord's just put it on my heart to pay off your debts. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Penelope kept tithing and was always able to pay her bills. Later, she met and married Nick. He owned and managed a number of rental properties and was a painting contractor with hopes of financial freedom. I've always wanted to be, you know, debt free and be able to help folks. The couple agreed that putting God first would open the door to financial blessings. So by faith, they made tithing a priority in their marriage. They also gave above their tithe. When you're giving, it does something that uh, just defeats the enemy. It really, really does. And um, if you're giving, that's, uh, you know, showing your heart and what you do. 
The couple dreamed of buying a home in cash and providing a Christian education for their kids. At the time, they didn't earn enough for either of those things, but they continued tithing, giving, and seeking God. Meanwhile, Penelope wanted to see Nick retire from painting. That's when she prayed to God that something would change. Big financial breakthroughs followed. Nick was able to sell his rental properties at a profit, quit painting, and even invest in more rentals. Within two years from when we started believing God to pay cash for our house, we were able to pay cash for a house. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, that's just the Lord's doing. There's no getting around that. And as Penelope prayed that God would provide creative solutions to increase their income even more, she started getting ideas for inventions like Skinny's Instant Lips. I've heard ladies on the phone crying, thanking her for the product that she invented. Skinny's landed the couple on Shark Tank, immediately increasing their sales by 400%. There's a general, you know, spiritual law there that you give, you know, and it'll be given unto you. As sales and income have continued to skyrocket, they've been able to put their kids through Christian school. And even with the COVID-19 pandemic, 2020 was their best year yet. If you're led by the Spirit of God and you're giving and tithing, that's where your home run comes from. That's when things start flowing and you start getting your breakthroughs. You do what you're supposed to do, God takes care of the rest. And here's how he does it. When you do what you're supposed to do, you're walking in obedience to his commandments. You're saying, God, I'm all in with you. I want to do life your way. Here's something that you get. It's from Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. I call it God's phone number. Call to me, and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. When you think about the treasure that God has in heaven, one of the great things he has, and we rarely access it, he's got a storehouse of ideas. He can show you how things work. He can give you new inventions. He can give you new ideas. He can give you, uh, just fill that entrepreneurial spirit with all kinds of wonderful things that will help people. And when you do it his way, you have the right. I'll call on you, and he will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Now, when you live God's way, that's when you get that. And you get a wonderful fellowship with him and the security of knowing that he's got your future, he's got your present, he's able to handle it all, and that you can do all things with him. Well, it's January 2021, and if you want to make a resolution that you're going to do it God's way, you're going to live in accordance with his commandments, give us a call and say, yes, I want to start with joining the 700 Club. How much is that? Well, it's just $20 a month. That breaks out to 65 cents a day. Some of you can give it a higher level. We have 700 Club Gold for you at $40 a month. 1,000 Club, $1,000 a year, and that's $84 a month. And when you call and give, know that your gift is going to preach the gospel around the world. We're training local Christians how to do Christian television in their own language with testimonies of what God is doing in their country, not some faraway place. And then we lead them in a prayer. It goes into Superbook to, to train the children of the world in the stories of the Bible, to show them how, uh, all the great riches that are in the Bible in their own language, not some faraway thing, but we'll, we'll take Superbook right to their actual language, the one that they grew up with, and show them the stories of the Bible. Another portion of your gift goes into the work of Operation Blessing to help people, and help people right here at home with food, with disaster relief, and then around the world with surgeries, water wells, livelihood programs. You're a part of all of it when you join the 700 Club. So do it now, 1-800-700-7000. Terry? Well, the government shut down Luma's business because of COVID. That didn't stop her from getting the virus herself. With no job and no strength to leave home, how was she able to get the food and supplies that she needed to survive? Well, take a look. This past year has been especially tough for Luma and her young son, Franco. It started when the government closed down Luma's home-based salon because of COVID-19. I am a hairdresser. 
but I wasn't allowed to serve my clients anymore. Then Luma's mom, who lives with them, got COVID while working at her job in a pet grooming business. I went to my mom's room at night to make sure she was still breathing. I was afraid she would not wake up the next morning. This is Luma's son, Franco. Grandma was sick, and I have to say goodnight from outside the door. I could not go in. Then Luma came down with COVID, too. I could not hug my mom. I got sick while taking care of mom. That's when I realized we would run out of food. When CBN's Orphan's Promise heard about the family situation, we provided some help. First, while they were still sick, we brought them food and groceries. I had never seen so much food in my life. We were impressed. God brought you here. He sent me food, milk, everything. After they recovered and the economy began to reopen, Orphan's Promise paid for Luma to take a class to expand her hairdressing salon. Then we gave her a portable table and lamp to add additional services to her business. When they gave us the table, I helped my mom to open it because I'm strong. Thank you for making my mom happy. I have so many clients now. I cannot go to sleep without thanking God for what he did for us through you. That's the way it's supposed to work, you know. God wants to use us, those of us who know him and love him, believe in who he is and his power to change things, to touch the lives of other people. Not just with things that are provided, like the food as significant as that was, but also the message of his love, which is what really frees people up in their lives. You help us do that all around the world, not just in this story, not just with this family, but thousands and thousands of families in places all around the globe and right here in the United States. Join the 700 Club. It's an opportunity to genuinely make a difference in the lives of people in need. And you never know, it could be any one of us tomorrow. So be a part of the answer today. It's 65 cents a day, $20 a month. That makes you a 700 Club member. But let me show you, there are many opportunities for you to make a difference. If you're already a 700 Club member, would you consider going up to 700 Club Gold? That's a gift of $40 a month. Or you might want to become a 1,000 Club member. That's a gift of $84 a month. Our 2,500 club members join us at $209 a month. And then founders, $417 a month. That works out to $5,000 a year. Ask God what he'd have you to do and then move forward with the, the peace in your heart and also the joy in knowing that God is working through you and in you and you are making a difference. Our way of saying thank you for joining the 700 Club, which is done, by the way, by calling our toll-free number. It's 1-800-700-7000. We're going to send you Pat's latest book. It's called I Have Walked with the Living God. You're going to love this. It's such a record of all the years that God has been using Pat to do phenomenal things and how he met him at every turn in the road with just what he needed. And it's a great faith builder. So that's our gift to you when you call. By the way, when you call, will you use Pledge Express? That's electronic monthly giving. Bank does all the work, but it saves us some costs so that we can put even more of your gift right into the lives of people like Luma and her family. Call now, 1-800-700-7000. Gordon? Well, Curtis got the opportunity of a lifetime. The problem, it came with a high cost one that his family couldn't afford. So how did he manage to pull it off? Take a look. U.S. Airman Curtis knew from an early age he wanted to enlist in the military. I come from a military family. I have a lot of relatives who served. It was just the clear path that I was gonna follow. Curtis's military career path changed significantly when he was screened to become an officer and accepted into the Air Force Officer Training Academy. His wife, Chelsea, was thrilled. It makes me very proud to be able to support him, and it's just really exciting for us. Curtis would be gone for two months, then report directly to his new duty station in California, leaving Chelsea to drive the 1,500-mile journey alone with the baby to meet Curtis. They decided to fly Chelsea and the baby and pay someone to drive their car out to California. The plan was expensive, but worth it. 
However, their finances took another hit when their car broke down halfway across the country and had to be towed to California. It was definitely hard, all these costs coming at once. We didn't have the funds and savings, so no, we it just not. went on the credit card. We probably spent ten dollars to $12,000 in a couple day period moving the house, getting the broken car halfway across the country. It was completely unplanned. Curtis and Chelsea relied on their faith that God would sustain them. My faith in the Lord is everything for both of us, I think, at the end of the night to be able to bow our heads and talk to God. And it just, it's helped us get through so many difficult times. The couple's new church home, Arbor Christian Fellowship, heard about their situation and asked helping the home front to assist. Pastor Dan Daniels told them CBN was reimbursing them the cost of Chelsea's flight and towing the car across country. And CBN would pay to fix the car too. How do you feel about that? That's amazing. That's pretty, yeah, wow, okay. <laughs> I'm just feeling so grateful right now. This is amazing. Thank you so much CBN for uh, this gift. <laughs> this is, this is life-changing for us. At their new duty station, they celebrated the arrival of their second daughter. They're now focusing on family rather than worrying about finances. We really appreciate it. It's absolutely gonna change our family's life. And I think in the future, if someone was considering donating through CBN to this program, they are going to change the lives of military members. You can change lives. How? By joining the 700 Club. Together, we can go to so many different places, help so many different people in so many different languages. Helping the home front is just one of the ministries of CBN. Uh, and when you join the 700 Club, you're helping all of that. If you want to do that, give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Say, yes, I want to join the 700 Club. Now, when you call, make sure you ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving. The bank is doing all the work and we send as our gift to you, Power for Life, monthly teaching CDs. So if you'd like those, ask for Pledge Express when you call, 1-800-700-7000. Or you can go to cbn.com when you give monthly on the, on the giving page. You automatically sign up for Pledge Express. We also have something new called Text to Give, where you text CBN, those letters, CBN, to 71777. And when you do that, a monthly giving page will come up and you join Pledge Express. Now, when you join the 700 Club, we have a gift for you. It's my father's latest book, I Have Walked with the Living God. Here's a sample of what's inside. Hi, this is Pat Robertson with an excerpt from my new book, I Have Walked with the Living God, read by actor Kevin Sorbo. I hope it will be a blessing to you as you walk with God. If you can take one thing away from this book, it is this. Get rid of the clutter in your life. Stop doing non-essential things and stop thinking you are accomplishing something just because you are engaged in a world of activities. Instead, spend your time in the presence of the Lord. By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Get your copy today when you become a CBN partner. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com. Hello, this is Pat Robertson. I've written a book called I Have Walked with the Living God. In its pages, I've shared many of the things God has spoken to me. At one time, the Lord told me, and I quote, do not fear the future, for I am the future. I can tell you that when you step out into the future, you step out into the hands of a loving God, whom you can trust not only for tomorrow, but forever. In Pat's dynamic latest book, you'll learn how to receive favor, wisdom, and discernment, how to overcome obstacles and live a life that is exhilarating and full of promise. I think this book can help you live that kind of a life. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com to receive your copy today. A life lesson heard from an inmate serving two life sentences. 
I could hear chains breaking and just falling to the floor. How one prisoner found freedom behind bars. Even uh, the officers, you know, seen I wasn't the person that came to prison. Next. Welcome to Washington for this CBN News Break. Israel says it has opened its embassy in the United Arab Emirates, following through on last year's agreement brokered by the Trump administration to establish full diplomatic ties with the Islamic country. Israel said the embassy would be in a temporary office while a permanent location is prepared. The Israeli foreign minister said the opening of the new embassy would allow the broadening of what are already warm ties between Israel and the UAE. Well, CBN has launched YouTube channels in more languages to spread the gospel to more children around the world. Over the holiday, CBN started channels featuring the Superbook Christmas episode to share the birth of Jesus. CBN now has Superbook YouTube channels in 41 languages, including Bulgarian, German, Uzbek, Greek, Polish, Mongolian, and many others. Now more children than ever have the opportunity to learn about Bible stories from CBN's internet outreach. Well, you can find out more about what CBN is doing around the world by going to cbn.com slash international. Gordon and Terry will be back right after this. Gossett was always looking over his shoulder, first for his drunken father, and then later for his fellow inmates. He even heard two prisoners plotting to kill him. So why is Frank able to live in peace today? Here's his story. He would come home in a bad mood most days, and I can't remember too many days that I didn't get a whipping for something. Frank thought he would never win his father's love. He only believed what he was told. And he would tell me that, that I was worthless and useless and you know, stupid sometimes. He never told me that he loved me. Uh, it seemed like I didn't live up to his expectations as his son. Nothing I could really do to get his attention or approval. Outside the home, he faced the same rejection every day from neighborhood children who bullied him relentlessly. That, you know, kind of made things even tougher because, again, I felt like, you know, I just don't fit in. Uh, I, I couldn't understand why. He became convinced there was only one way he would be accepted. My dad and my uncles would get drunk on the weekends. Thought maybe if I learned how to drink and I could, you know, uh, be one of the guys, maybe I would be accepted. Drinking only got him into more trouble, but it also gave him an escape, and to Frank, that was worth the punishment. It took away the pain. You know, I'm going to probably get a whipping for something anyway, so I'm doing something to be whipped for. Frank was 11 when his family left the country for a town near Birmingham. There he found another means of escape, LSD. Soon he was funding his addiction by growing and dealing pot and fueled by the benefits that came with the lifestyle. When you're an addict or you know, uh, as long as you've got money or drugs, you've got friends. They would uh, say, well, wow, where'd you get this? It's really good. By 16, Frank dropped out of school and took a job working in a steel mill alongside his dad. I thought maybe that would be an opportunity for he and I to bond. My dad would, would be very critical. I felt like, you know, am I ever gonna do anything to measure up? Frank threw himself into his work and continued dealing but only to get more money for his next addiction, cocaine. Cocaine, you know, was everything. I mean, it, everything revolved around me getting high. Frank would do anything for the next high, regardless of the consequences. I had friends who were dying of, of AIDS who were IV drug users. That didn't stop me. Um, had people, you know, friends that were uh, killed in drug deals gone bad. Even after he was arrested and sentenced to 25 years in prison for stealing $17,000 from his employer, Frank continued to use and sell drugs. But being a dealer in prison left him in constant fear. There was um, two guys that had owed me a, a drug debt. I'd heard they were wanting to kill me over it. I knew that at that point that, you know, I, I've got to do something different in life. 
It was then an inmate began sharing about the peace he found through Christ. He invited me to go to church with him one night, and that February the 5th, 2008, God just got a hold of my heart. After I went to the altar and uh, we prayed, I just remembered feeling a peace that I hadn't felt in my whole life. All I can say is the Holy Spirit just touched me that night. And I don't want to say I heard an audible voice, but I just felt a feeling like, are you ready to give all of this stuff up you've been doing, you know, because I have something better for you. And when I said, yes, Lord, it's like I could hear chains breaking and just fall into the floor. I just felt this freedom. I, I, I can't explain it. It was just a freedom like I've never felt before in my life. With that peace, Frank became a new man. I quit doing drugs that very day. There was a, a seminary college there in the prison, and I got involved in that and going to classes, going to every church service I could go to. Even uh, the officers, you know, seen that I was, I wasn't the person that came to prison. After living three years clean and sober, Frank received something he never expected, an early release. God opened a door for me to go to this halfway house, which I'm uh, the only person who completed the nine month program without either going back to prison or wound up dead. Today, Frank serves full time as a prison chaplain, has been clean for 13 years, and even reconciled with his father. And he says it's all because of the unconditional love he received from God. Jesus has been the friend who's accepted me for who I was. God has redeemed my time. He's uh, restored so many things in my life. Just so awesome to see God just uh, giving me everything that I had before, but better. Well, I think about how Frank's life began and the power of words. Do you remember when you were a kid and this was a saying that people used to use, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But it's not true. Because words leave an indelible mark on our hearts and on our minds when we are vulnerable enough to be wounded by them, they begin to define us. That was the beginning for Frank. It was a father who said, you're no good, you're not worth anything. When in fact, the opposite was true, but how would Frank know? You know, sometimes we have to run and run and run after things, thinking we're finding something that will matter, that will fill up the emptiness inside of us to come to the end of ourselves. And for Frank, that meant he wound up in prison. Even there, it didn't stop him. He kept doing the same things that were so destructive that were so defining to his character in a negative way, that left him empty and needy, same place he'd been when he came in. But then, but then he heard the word of God. You know, that's a word that when it comes into us can completely redefine who we are, can completely tell us what God intended when he created us because we are creations. The Bible says God knew us before we were formed in our mother's wombs. He intended every day of our lives. He knew who we would be, what we would do. What an amazing love, isn't it, that God would then wait. What does he wait for? He waits for us to come to the moment that Frank talked about where God spoke to his heart and said, are you ready to give all of this up? You know, sometimes we cling to garbage. We cling to bad relationships. We cling to bad habits. And we just keep doing them over and over because it's easier than changing. But I hope you can hear what Frank had to say today. There was that moment where God came to him and said, I'm here, are you willing to give up everything that you've been doing so I can redeem you, I can restore you? That's what God did for Frank. 
all those things that the enemy had poured into his life, all the chains that had been wrapped around him, God said, a new beginning for you, Frank. Right now, the decision is yours. And it's so for you today. You know, some of you are watching this. You're in prison right now. And you've just allowed yourself to be defined by poor choices, by other people, even by the lack of what people put into your life. Maybe you never had anyone who cared enough to say the negative things to you that Frank's father said to him. You can have a new beginning today. You have a father who loves you, who's already paid the price to redeem you, to give you restoration and a brand new beginning. Fresh start. The old passes away and all things become new. You know, God's love will change your heart. It'll change your life. It'll change the way you think. It will change the way you act. Say yes today. Let the chains fall off of you. Jesus said, I came to set the captives free. If that's you today, then let him set you free. It's nothing more than a prayer away, a prayer of surrender, but a prayer that you have the commitment and the power to make. Just say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Come into my life and forgive me. I want to change. Change me. Let me receive your love and give you mine. I want to leave you with these words from Romans. I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. That's for you today. God bless you.